This is the fourth video in our series in part one, talking about the nature of spirits and the fourth video in the series on angels. And so we're trying to understand exactly what angels are and what they do so that whenever we begin looking at the verses talking about spirits that we might be able to rightly discern which spirits we're talking about. Is it the Holy Spirit or is it some other spirit? Uh, it is possible that uh, I've, I've found in my studies that it, actually um, the human spirit sometimes is really hard to differentiate from the Holy Spirit, but occasionally it does happen that, that um, when you examine the fruit of a spirit, because all spirits have fruit in what they do, judge a tree by its fruit, right? Um, a angels are doing things that are honoring to God, theoretically, and so sometimes you see something done honoring to God, and you could say, theoretically, it may be an angel. Uh, it doesn't actually happen that often, but it does happen every once in a while. Um, I wanted to talk about some... Uh, a peculiarity with respect to angels and that is um, recognizing that spirits are able to have three kinds of orientations to people um, this is it's just the the way that it is uh, that we see the Holy Spirit doing this and uh, I don't know that necessarily he has to do it this way, but it's just what he seems to be what he has chosen to do. And so I have a chapter in, in the book in part two, the Holy Spirit with, upon, and in, I think is the name of the chapter. And so the, the Holy Spirit can be with you. You'll remember that Jesus said in John chapter 20, um, or no, it's not John chapter 20, it's earlier than that, but he said the, the, Holy, the Holy Spirit is with you and he will be in you. And it's John chapter 20, whenever he breathes on them and says receive the Holy Spirit. Um, and so the, the Holy Spirit was with the disciples the entire time that they were doing ministry. Um, he didn't come upon them until Pentecost, right? 50 days after um, Jesus ascended. And so you re you'll remember that um, he was with them, which is very interesting um, because most of the time in Scripture, whenever we see a manifestation of power in the Holy Spirit, it is because the Holy Spirit has come upon. And of course, you absolutely see that in Acts 2 on Pentecost. But the Holy Spirit was with the um Disciples in, in John chapter 20, Jesus breathed on them as ev evocative of the breath of life in Genesis chapter 2. Breathing in them the breath of life, receive the Holy Spirit. And um, then the Holy Spirit was in them. And then he said, wait for the promise. Wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the power um, from heaven. Again, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, and so he sent he sent them to Jerusalem to to be filled with the Holy Spirit and have the Holy Spirit come upon them in power, um, so that they would be empowered to do um, the ministry and preach the gospel that God had for them. And so we see that this just with the the apostles, we see the the Holy Spirit orienting Himself with them in three fundamental ways, and and we can see this generally too. Um, of course, um, demons can possess a person. Uh, there's a question of what exactly does that mean? Because this text says a, a person has a demon. And so there seems to be a little bit of fluidity about the, the, instead of the demon just, like, for instance, our human spirit is always in our body, right? And uh, James says in, um, I think it's the, the last chapter, the last verse in chapter two, he says the body without spirit is dead, right? And so if our spirit actually left our body for, I guess, an extended period of time, our body would just die because it is the animating principle. Well, um, so our spirit always is indwelling our body, right? Um, but other spirits can indwell too. And we see angel or demons that um, possess people. We'll talk more, much more about that in 
the um, examining the fruit of the demonic. But um, angels never fill a person. And the, the, only, the only way really you could know this is because you've read the whole of Scripture. And from the whole of Scripture, you, you just recognize there's only one verse in the entire Bible that says that an angel came upon somebody. And this is Luke chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, the shepherds, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of joy tidings of great joy which shall be to all people and so like the come upon is the king james has a has a has a a little sort of footnote that said stand before them and so like i i think it's fairly clear from the context of this verse that the angel doesn't actually come upon them as though you're like putting on a um putting on a garment or putting on a coat and so the coat is like surrounding you and it's upon you like I think it's the the King James English is just communicating that the angel of the Lord appeared to them. But anyway, no else, nowhere else in Scripture does it ever say that an angel fills a person or comes upon a person. And um, so I just want to point out a distinction that we recognize with demons because demons do seem to possess a person or come upon a person. And... Um, and then the, the fact that, that God comes upon and fills a person and indwells a person. And angels do not do this, but then demons do do this, suggests to me that this was an activity that, that is just for God. That God alone orients himself like this. So this, angels can be with... And so you kind of see this um, in Psalm 91, verses 9 through 12, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. All thy ways. And so it's kind of like a, um, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. And so it's it's kind of like, in a sense, a guardian angel, like the angel's with you. It's not like in you. But it's it's with you as as in you're sitting down having coffee with a friend or a friend is with you. They're not in you. They didn't jump on you. They're just with you, right? Um, and so it, seem, it seems as if the Lord has reserved the coming upon and indwelling for himself. And so then it's interesting to see the demons that are in rebellion are doing the things that the Lord has reserved for himself. Um, but angels do not come upon a person, clothe a person as, as it were, and they do not indwell a person. Um, so angels are warriors, and I just want to read uh, an excerpt from Daniel chapter 10. So this is t chapter 10, verses 10 through 21. Um, and the, the language that's used here is, is prince. But I think we'll see, hopefully, from the context and then also from a couple of the verses that I'll read that, that we're, ta we're actually talking about angels, even though they call them princes. Uh, and behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to thee and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then he said unto me, For not, Daniel, for the... From the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. So God is sending an angel to Daniel. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, a spirit, okay, and it's a demonic spirit, withstood me. And so this is such an interesting scenario. Daniel is praying and humbling himself and fasting before the Lord. God sends this angel to Daniel, but Daniel's waiting for 21 days, three weeks, because the angel is in spiritual warfare in the heavenlies with the um, prince of the kingdom of Persia. And so then we, lear we learn a couple things from this. Number one, there's warfare going on in the heavenlies. 
and the, the one of the names of the devil is the resistor, right? Um, and so, so he, he God is allowing very interestingly this kind of warfare to go on, where the angel has a real struggle on his hands and a real fight, and to the degree that he's delayed for three weeks in carrying out the command that the Lord gave him to to do. But then also the 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 language which we're also going to see here. Prince of Greece, Prince of Persia, we see a geographic nature of spirits that um, just as people can be oriented, you know, there can, you, you are a citizen of a land, you live in a certain kingdom, you have to do with a certain kingdom, maybe you're sent to a certain place for a certain reason. Um, spirits can do exactly the same thing, right? And so there, there can be a, an angel or a demon of a particular place and they are assigned to that place right and that's 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 just like we see the kind of thing like an ambassador um, from the united states is sent to japan or wherever and they serve in that place even though they're maybe not from that place necessarily so anyway all right um the prince of the kingdom of persia withstood me one in 20 days but lo michael one of the chief princes and so he as we're going to see is in the archangel came to help me. And I remained there with the Kings of Persia. Now I am come. So now that, so now it was just, he was fighting, but then Michael comes and kind of as a reinforcement. So there's, there's additional fighting and helps him out. Now I'm come to make thee understand which shall befall thy people in the latter days for yet the vision is for many days. And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face to the ground and became dumb. And behold, one, like the similitudes of the sons of men, touched my lips, and I opened my mouth and spake, and said unto him that stood before me, O my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. For how can a servant of my Lord, of this my Lord, talk with my Lord? For as me straight away there remained no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Um, then there came again and touched me one like the appearance of a man and he strengthened me and said O man greatly beloved fear not peace be unto thee be strong yea be strong and when he had spoken unto me I was strengthened and said let my Lord speak for thou hast strengthened me then he said knowest thou wherefore I come to thee and now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia again a geographic possibly a principality a, ge a geographic spirit a geopolitical spirit and when i'm gone forth the prince of grecia greece shall come um, but i will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth that there is none that holdeth with me in these things but michael your prince and then daniel chapter 12 verse 1 and at that time shall michael stand up the great prince with sta which standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble as never was since there was a nation even to the, that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Okay, and so we, so first of all, we have three ge geographies mentioned. We have Persia, we have Grecia, Greece, but then we also have the great prince which stands up for the children of thy people, so Israel. And so Michael is not only an archangel, which we'll see here in a second, but he, he, is, he is an, an angel over um, Israel. Okay, and so um, Jude one nine, yet Michael the archangel, and it goes on from there. The point, the point is identifying who this Michael is. Michael, who is called um, the great prince, which standeth up for the children of thy people. But he is he is an archangel, and so we have the identification of who it is that we're talking about in Jude one nine, and so we see more of the warfare. Is part of the enmity, but we also see uh, also the identification of of Michael as a chief in Revelation chapter twelve, verses seven through twelve. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. 
And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And so we see we see this war happening, and um, in the in the case of this this uh, heavenly war that's going on, um, the devil was defeated. The devil and his demons were defeated. Um, finally, I just want to consider some fruit of these spirits because all spirits produce fruit. They all have impacts, agendas, motives. The fruit of the spirit, you know? What is the fruit of the spirit? And so it, it helps us. Um, the fruit of the devil is stealing and killing and destroying and anxiety and oppression and fear and um, lying, <sighs> bondage, death, brokenness. Um, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace, faith, goodness, gentleness, kindness, patience, and self-control. We see these spirits in, um, for example... Um, then there came again one that touched me like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me and said, O man greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. And when it had spoken to me, I was strengthened. Of course, we see the same thing, um, at m angels ministering to Jesus. They were sent by God, just as this was this angel specifically says to Daniel that he was sent to him when he started praying. And they, this spirit is strengthening him and also encouraging him and giving him a message from God. And so we see the, the, the fruit of these angels. Um, we also see in, Revel in the Daniel 10, but also in Revelation chapter 12, the angels are fighting against the devil. They are like Jesus. One of the reasons why Jesus came is to destroy the works of the devil. John tells us in his first epistle, um, these angels are fighting against, fighting against the schemes of the devil according to the charge, you know, according to God giving them leave to do so. And so the, these angels are, are producing fruit of ministering and strengthening um, the people of God. And again, at God's behest, not at, not at the people's behest. Daniel didn't command the angel to come to him as he was laying on the ground weak. No, God sent the angel to him, which is why the angel came, right? So uh, I, I think that we've done a pretty decent job of just doing sort of a, a general overview. This book is not about angels. I'm not trying to write a whole book about angels, but we are just... Um, contemplating some considerations about angels that we can keep in mind as we look through other scriptures and trying to discern exactly what spirit is in view.